Hey coaches, with this video, we're going to dig into just a little blurb in a coach se uh, coaching session where you've got plenty of client language to explore. This uh, the, the goal of this content is to help illustrate the value of more meaningful client language, how to leverage that language in questions. Uh, I'll try to produce a few of these. I'll often get questions of how do you, how do you know a question is closer to PCC level performance? MCC level performance, and how do you have more transformational coaching? Uh, this also kind of goes along the lines of how do you have more spaciousness in coaching? Because if you have lesser use of client language, more tactical questions, you're going to naturally not, if you ask like, when is the meeting? And they say Friday, there's no point in having a four second silence afterwards. So if you're struggling with your PCC recording for your training, or for the ICF, or similarly with the MCC recording uh, for the ICF, um, it's good to reflect on the depth of language you're using because it makes a big impact in a lot of different dimensions um, of both ICF assessments and makes a big impact on the client and the work that they can do in a session. So in this one, we're gonna be particularly looking at characters uh, by the end of it. There's four types uh, that I'm gonna highlight here. Uh, deeper language, and we'll see examples of all of these as we go. Meaningful language, this is identity-based language, values-based language, I, uh, language about um, the, the person, the who, uh, the, uh, the ICF often mentions in the ICF competencies and markers. Figurative language, this would be the boat sailing or the ship sailing at sea, um, heading to the moon, uh, uh, being in a, in a forest and there's two paths and wanting to choose the path less taken. All the figurative language that the client might use, maybe analogies, metaphors, um, all of that stuff provides us some really fun client language and we can suddenly find ourselves on the ship while it's at sea adrift looking for our way home using our questions, leveraging that kind of language. Others would be mindsets, perspectives, the way a person sees the world and themselves in that world. And finally, we'll talk a little bit about characters. Characters can be really valuable when a client identifies one of their perspectives or one of the, like the way they live out a value. Um, it's almost as if they're saying, there's this, this side of my personality and that side of my personality. And those two sides, while they're not truly two different people, they can almost be two different characters in the story of the client's agenda. And the characters could also be relatives, family, uh, so like family or mentors, meaningful people in the character's life, or sorry, the, the client's life. They too can act as characters on the stage. We'll see some examples of that as we go. But first, let's get to um, talking about how to interpret this little paragraph. This is kind of a, a mentor coaching and assessing take that we're gonna do today. We're gonna use this as the demo. Um, script from the client, shared with permission, not getting any context outside of this little bit here. Uh, and also, just to give a bit of context as I read it, you'll notice there's quite a bit of hesitancy and thinking. And I'm, I'm actually going to speed up the reading because of how much space was happening in the midst of all of this. So sorry in answering the da 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 about how the question of, my, uh, of understanding my need for perfection impacts how I show up in the world and that's that first space that, that I said it allowed me to have more choice in how I respond to things for myself and my expectations of others. Then there was thinking about what's the alternative to perfection? I said being okay with the cadence of seasons. And then that's when the idea of perfection equals prison and, and perfection removes choice came up referencing the previous session. Um, you know, that's pretty powerful because what I'm learning about the role of choice and understanding my need for perfection is like, like, I have it. Okay. I have choice. So goodness gracious, like what's all going on here? We, we are in the middle of a TV show, episode 40. We don't know any of the context of what happened before this, and we don't know where it's going to go next necessarily. But we do have data in this little bit of a script. And the question of today is, what is the meaningful language present? What options does a coach have? The ingredients that the coach can draw from this little paragraph and put into the next question. And we're going to use a one to five scale to demonstrate the quality of the language the coach might use. And it starts with a one, but that's 
kind of an awkward one because it would be not using anything or using a different word that's almost contradictory. And, and I don't really want to spend much time on that. Just a one out of five tends to be, uh, if, I'm, if I'm scoring uh, in an assessment, usually means that the coach is directly contradicting the client language with their own interpretive language and not really handing that back for the client to openly interpret for themselves. So trying to avoid the one out of five, let's focus more on what's above it. Skimming the surface would be a two out of five, and these are the more tactical style uh, pieces of information, details, uh, language that does demonstrate the coach is listening to the client, but not at a deeper level, not at, a, 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 at an impactful, meaningful level. Uh, so question, respond, thinking, those kinds of words. Um, we often see words like plan, meeting, a day, that kind of thing, where the coach might use those words from the client, but there's not much weight or meaning behind them. Next, let's get into moderate depth. Nice threes out of fives. These are your bread and butter choices to pull from the client's language. You have the sorry here, perfection, need for perfection. There's a lot there. Um, wanting more choice is a big theme here as well. Expectations of others uh, and, and powerful. And with things like perfection, powerful choice, the reason I would keep these at three out of five instead of something stronger is if we just take it by itself. So if I ask the question, what are you learning about perfection right now? It creates a, a nice, I hear, I heard you, you were talking a lot about perfection, but I'm missing some other things. I'm missing some even better versions. We will look at those now with the fours out of fives. So these are the deeper language options and uh, represents more of the PC, upper PCC and MCC type of choices that should be made in those kinds of recordings submitted to the ICF or to their training programs where the coach is pretty consistently relying on the, the stronger versions of the client language. So my need for perfection, how perfection impacts the way I show up, how I show up in the world, uh, first base, is there an alternative to perfection? What is the alternative to perfection? Cadence of seasons. It sounds like a like a book. Um, that's a that's a fascinating one, and it, I think you can make a really great question out of that. Um, that's like a five out of five question because it's so illustrative. Perfection equals prison. Again, very strong language. Uh, perfection removes choice. Pretty powerful because, and so there's some meaning here, and then. Understanding I have a choice. I kind of highlighted everything, but understanding I have a choice. It's a very powerful one. And we might say, well, these are the most powerful things that the client says. Um, that's mostly true. That's mostly true, but we'll talk about a little bit, uh, a little bit stronger. We'll, we'll talk about what's going to fill up uh, this little box here. But for now, we've got these twos, question, respond, thinking, um, not in the session, but words like plan, meeting, Friday. Then in this session, some really good three out of fives, choice, perfection, expectations of others, powerful, uh, the word sorry. Just using these on their own would represent listening to the client, but it's missed opportunities for some really strong things. And then really good work from the coach to pull in something of all of these options. Also, a simple change in expression when the coach leverages that. When um, you were just smiling as you were talking about all of that, What's the smile about? That's a nice four out of five, just pointing to that change in expression on its own, change in energy, change in tone, that kind of thing. So we can see a nice, strong question here. Um, coach responds, I notice your energy really shifted, really smiling a lot when you're talking about choice. What's happening is you realize this. So this is a standard um, fact, like a factual observation. I see these things when this was happening, no interpretation, just seeing the stuff, reflecting it back, what is happening for you as you realize this. Fact-based observation, open hand back question, and uh, really demonstrates a lot of hearing. Your energy really shifted, that language is like a four out of five, smiling a lot, that's a four out of five, talking about choice, that's a kind of a standard fare, good use of client language, 
And so when you combine all of that in a nice question, it's, it's a really strong question. I noticed this in you and this in you when you're talking about this. What's happening for you? So good stuff. It's a, it's a good question. Now let's look at, might, we might call this the, the highest tier of using client language from this. And it's going to go beyond what we have even because using client language at the five out of five level often is going to span the session. So um, meaningful combinations where theoretically, if the client hadn't talked about perfection equals perf uh, prison and removes choice to be able to say, or like cadence of season or something like that, maybe asking, how is that sense of perfection equals prison help you move through the seasons or something like that. That would be a nice, meaningful combination, maybe 4.5 or 5. Uh, but combining two strong statements into one can make uh, a really strong question. Uh, I'm not sure if that would be a good question in that case, but just an example. Meaningful combinations, challenging combinations, these would be ones where you are poking at the client's perception in an empathetic way, but in a, in a, in a way that uses their language, however, a, a challenging way. And then broadly connective language would be uh, language that combines what happened in the last session with what happened here, uh, what they're saying now in combination with what they said at the very beginning. So you're demonstrating an ongoing sense of empathy. And finally, we have this idea of characters, which we talked about at the very beginning. Um, there are some opportunities here to bring in the sense of character work, and we're going to see that in this question here. So. During the day with practicing an intentional choice, I guess choice should also be highlighted, but what does perfectionist Katie need in order to allow choice Katie to have some time at the wheel? So let's break down what's going on in this session. Some time at the wheel. I know this coach, this isn't standard language I would expect uh, in an everyday question from, uh, from this coach. What we're seeing here is a reference to a previous portion of the session. Some time at the wheel is a desire for for this client, um, some control. So this is bringing language from earlier on, spanning the session. Uh, choice, we have this um, as, a, as a standard three out of five language, but the real language is this character, perfectionist Katie versus choice Katie. And so when you break that down, connecting these two characters this is not two actual people, uh, not two personalities, but two aspects of this person's life, the perfectionist perspective and the choice perspective. And labeling it as perfectionist Katie and choice Katie does a lot of good stuff for the client. It makes the processing of the session go faster. Later on, the, the, uh, the coach could do something like, what would... Um, what would perfectionist Katie say about this plan that you hope to enact over the next week? Um, what would the perspective of choice Katie be um, when that perfectionist, perfectionism shows up, that kind of thing? So you can play with the actors on the stage when you have the characters in play. So that's really strong language. And then some time at the wheel that's spanning the, uh, the sessions, so I would grade this as a five out of five style question. Really, really strong work. Um, so as we wrap up this little explanation of scoring this little blurb here, uh, I'd like to highlight that deeper language offers higher pressure exploration. And it is important to keep in mind that high pressure exploration is not always right or good. So I want to talk about that in a little bit, but generally higher pressure exploration when aligned with the client's agenda can produce rapid growth and learning. A client who's uh, not familiar with coaching in a, like a sponsored engagement, so they're not paying for the coaching. It's maybe the first one, two, three sessions to have, let's say this Katie is in a first session and never experienced coaching before for the coach to say, what does perfectionist Katie need in order to allow choice Katie to have some time at the wheel? It is going to be probably not received very well. It's very ambitious to do that level of pressure that early on. But for someone who's familiar with coaching, has good rapport with the coach, when the coach leverages deep, meaningful client language consistently in the blues and the purples or in the fours and the fives, consistently leveraging that language towards the client's agenda of getting time at the wheel, 
with uh, having more choice and, and, and being more intentional with their lives um, and having a bit more freedom to not be perfectionist, like having a plan around that and using that meaningful language to help the person come up with that plan, the work will happen faster because the client will do more. Deeper language provides higher pressure exploration, harder work for the client, and that harder work allows them oftentimes to finish the exploration earlier. Hope this is interesting at least, helpful. I'll be producing a few of these little breakdowns as we go. I'm often asked how um, how I how assessing works when when doing that like a data driven approach uh, where you're scoring on different dimensions and uh, I figure this is a good way to unpack this a little bit. As you reflect on your own craft, I would encourage you to uh, take some time to transcribe. You know, get a free Otter account or some other transcription service. Play back the session. Look for sentences, questions that feel a little bit over, over more like a template or not as strong as you'd like them to be. Consider rewriting those. Go back up to the paragraph ahead of it and consider what was the meaningful language, the figurative language, mindsets, maybe even characters, um, language that might span the session. And if you were to bring more of that higher pressure language in from the client, how might you rewrite that question to better serve the client's agenda? Not just frolic through the fields of fun language, but to really help that client process more effectively. It's a very important exercise. I do encourage you to do that. We reflect on our work and our art so that we can make a bigger impact. Hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you for coaching.